Gopi Janavalaba Girivara Dari Gopi Janavalaba Girivara Dari Yashoda Nandana Prajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Prajajana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jayu Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jayo Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jam Vishnu Pad Padamam Saparva Jakachari Astuta Sutta His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Kijai Jam Vishnu Pad Padamam Saparva Jakachari Astuta Sutta Sushimad Shringagu Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Kijai Ananti Kodi Vaishnavinda Kijai Iskan BBT Founder Acharya Shila Prabhupada Kijai Namachari Shila Haridas Thakur Kijai Premzako Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adveta Gadadha Shiva Sadigur Bhaktavinda Kijai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopi Gopi Nasya Makund Radha Kund Giri Govardhan Kijai Vrindavan Dham Kijai Mayapur Dham Kijai Navadweep Dham Kijai Tosi Devi Bhakti Devi Kijai Jamunamaya Gangamaya Kijai Their Divine Lordship Shri Shri Rukmini Dorkadish Kijai Their Divine Lordship Shri Shri Jagannath Baldev Shimate Subhadra Kijai Their Divine Lord Shri Shri Gornitai Kijai Garantara Srimad Bhagavatam Kijai. Transcendental Book Distribution Kijai. Harinam Sankirtan Jagu Kijai. Transcendental Prashadam Distribution Kijai. Trans Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Bola Bola. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So Lord Balaram's appearance day today we're very fortunate to be able to celebrate it and learn something about Lord Balaram so let's find out who Balaram is by discussing and seeing some of his pastimes so today we're going to read from the Srimad Bhagavatam. This is the 10th canto, chapter 65, and we're going to read text 28 and 29. Rama Rama Mahabaho Najane Tava Vikramam Yashyakam Sena Vidrita 
Jagati Jagatapate Rama Rama Mahabaho Najane Tava Vikramam Yashakam Sena Vidrita Jagati Jagatapate Rama Rama Mahabaho Najane Tava Vikramam Yashakam Sena Vidrita Jagati Jagatapate Rama Rama Mahabaho Jagati Jagata Pate Vaishnavis Rama Rama Mahabaho Najane Tava Vikramam That's like the answer of it Rita Jagati Jagata Pate Rama Rama Mahabaho Rama Rama Mahabaho Rama Rama O oh, Rama Rama Mahabaho O oh, mighty armed one Najane I do not appreciate Tava your Vikramam prowess Yesha whose Eka one Am Sena by a portion Virita is sustained Jagati the earth Jagata of the universe Pate O Master This is Goddess Jamuna speaking Rama Rama O mighty armed one I know nothing of your prowess with a single portion of yourself, you hold up the earth, O Lord of the universe. So this is uh, the phrase, a kamsena, with a single portion. It refers to the Lord's expansion as seisha. And this is confirmed by the acharyas. So uh, let's go to the next uh, verse. I'll just chant. Param bhavam bhagavato bhagavan mamajana tim Moktumarsi Vishvatman Prapanam Bhaktavatsalaha My Lord, please release me, O soul of the universe. I didn't understand your position as a supreme Godhead, but now I have surrendered unto you, and you are always kind to your devotees. So that's... This is Jamuna Devi. This is past time. We'll get into that. But let me just read the verses again one more time. So this is Goddess Jamuna. This is what she's saying. Rama, Rama, O mighty armed one, I know nothing of your prowess. With a single portion of yourself, you hold up the earth, O Lord of the universe. My Lord, please release me, O soul of the universe. I didn't understand your position as a supreme Godhead, but now I have surrendered unto you and you're always kind to your devotees. 
So this is Jamuna Devi. She's talking about the supreme nature of the supreme personality Godhead, Lord Balaram. And she's calling him the soul of the universe. You're inside of everything. You know, and she, she's asking for mercy. And Lord Balaram is saying, you want me to release you? You want me to liberate you? Why you disobeyed me? You deserve to be punished. Why should you be liberated? It's kind of like the pastime. Because Lord Balaram was enjoying with his gopis and he was drinking this Varuni beverage made out of honey and he was appeared to be intoxicated. So now she's surrendering to him and she's saying if someone surrenders to you then you know you're the lover of your devotees and you're the caretaker of your devotees. So she's praying that I didn't know your glory and that's why I did wrong so now I come to know your glory and I'm surrendered to you so please protect me. So the point is that sometimes we go into illusion and that's unfortunate and it is preventable but sometimes it's by the force of circumstance by a lack of caution or whatever we go into illusion so but what's more important is not that we never go into illusion we can try our best to never go into illusion and we may go into illusion that's our first mistake but what's important is how we respond to the mistake do we correct the mistake or do we perpetuate that mistake? So perpetuating that mistake means that we try to justify what we did and we try to prove that what we did is right. So, but no, we have to admit that we're wrong and then you could correct it. So whenever we go into illusion, it's also because we've shown interest in that delusion and we've come into danger and that danger teaches us. So we pray to Krishna Balaram. Now I understand how powerful you, you are. I need your protection. I'm weak. You're powerful. Your illusory energy is very powerful. And I didn't understand your protection. And I don't want to fall into misery. So <laughs> now I understand your glory and I surrender to you. So in this way, we can surrender and follow in the footsteps of Jamuna Devi and pray to please release me, protect me. And, you know, Especially like we we'll always have that tendency to be an illusion and tempted temptation. Anyway, that's just to give you an idea of the the verse and the pastime. So Lord Balaram, this is the uh, Krishna Balaram's name name giving ceremony, and uh, this is a painting by uh, Jadarani, to Bhuvaneshwari Dasi and Parikshit Das. But in those days, many devotees worked on one painting. So they're eager to hear from Gargamuni uh, Nandamaraj. He arranged for a secret name-giving ceremony in his cow shed. And this is what Gargamuni informed Nandamaraj and the son of, uh, <coughs> that the son of Rohini would be very pleasing to his family members. So he would, he would be called Rama Balaram. And in the future, he will also be extraordinarily strong and therefore would be called Baladev. And then Gargamuni informed Nanda that his son would be known as Vasudev and Krishna, that's the other son, but that this child has had many other names due to his various varieties of pastimes. And he said that this child will have the power, beauty, and opulence all in level of Narayan. That's <laughs> personality guy. So that's in the Krishna book, that's uh, in chapter 8. So this is very nicely described. So we see Vasudev, actually he had several wives and two of them were Devaki and Rohini. And now this is a time when Kamsa was persecuting so much. Vasudev and Devaki put them into prison. And then what happened is Vasudev entrusted his other wife Rohini to live in the cowherd village of his dear most friend Nanda Maharaj. And so he was living in Goku along with Nanda and Yasoda and under the protection of the Rajavasis. So she was living very, very happy there. So this child, Balaram, he was transferred to her room. And that was on the full moon night of Shravan. So this beautiful child was born, Sri Balaram. So this is, uh, so when we speak of Vishnu Tattva, 
Balaram's presence is really important. It's described in the Bhagavad and in the Brahma Samhita and in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam. That Krishna is the original form of the absolute truth. And also it's described Govinda Maripusham Tamaham Bajami. That he is the Aripusha, the original person. Sorry, I can't do that. Sorry, I don't know what happened here. This is what happens with technology. <laughs> Siri thought I was talking to her. She wants to know about Balaram too. So anyway, this is uh, Adi Prusha, the original person. So when Krishna in the spiritual world of Goloka Vrindavan, he wants to enjoy transcendental Leela, he first expands himself to the Vaibhava Prakash as Baladev. And Baladev is the original servitor of Godhead. He is Krishna himself that appears to serve Krishna. And how does he do that? How does he appear to serve Krishna? So we'll find out. So this, this is a, a Chaitanya as Balaram. So one day Lord Chaitanya called out, bring me some honey, bring me some honey. You know, Lord Balaram enjoys this drink we've mentioned, made of honey, it's called Varuni. So Lord Nityananda understood the Lord's mood and so he brought him a pot of Ganges water. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu drank the water and began to dance in ecstasy. And while the Lord was in ecstasy of Balaram, all the devotees there assembled, you can see them on the bottom there. And they also began to dance overwhelmed in ecstasy. So that's summarized from the Chaitanya Chartramita. That's in the Adi Lila 17, 159 to 119. That's another painting by Jadarani Dasi. So this is, uh, you see Jamuna there, she's praying again. Yeah, Rama, Rama, Baha, Maha, Bahu. You know, like that. So, and then here we go, the river. Goddess Jamuna prays for Lord Balaram's mercy. So as we were mentioning a little bit, Lord Balaram enjoys with his coward girlfriends in the garden by the Jamuna River. And he smelled the sweet aroma of this Varuni liquor coming from the hollow of a nearby tree. So he went to that tree with his companions and he drank that sweet Varuni. And then at that time, there was Gandharva's resounding in the sky, kettle drums, they were throwing flowers down. And Lord Balaram and the coward girls, they were wandering through various forests, you know, through the Raj, you know, Rajadam. And then he desired to play in the waters of the Jamuna. And then he summoned her. And then Jamuna Devi disregarded his command, thinking him to be drunk. So angered by this, Balaram began to drag the river with the tip of his plow, saying, O oh, sinful one, disrespecting me, you do not come when I call you, but rather move only by your own whim. Therefore, with the tip of my plow, I shall bring you here in a hundred streams. So this, this uh, river goddess, Jamuna, came and fell at the feet of Lord Balaram. And then glorifying him, she admitted her mistake, you know, as not understanding his position as a Supreme Personality guided. So then... Jamuna was forgiven and the Lord played in the water with his full satisfaction. This is a painting by Pariksha Das in 1986. So there's another pastime of Lord Balaram. And uh, this is in the 10th canto. Uh, this is six, chapter 68, the marriage of Samba. So Samba, he was the darling son of Jambavati, who was one of Krishna's wives. And uh, so, uh, uh, so the darling son Jambari kidnapped Duridon's daughter Lakshmana from her Swayamvara assembly. So in response to that, the Kauravas they joined forces to arrest him. And after Samba held off, he held them off actually single-handedly for some time. But then six warriors jumped on him, and they deprived him of his chariot. You know and. Uh, broke his bow to pieces, they seized him, they tied him up, and they brought him and Lakshmana back to Hastinapur. But then King Ugrasena, he heard of Samba's capture, and he called upon the Yadavas to retaliate, and they were all angry and they are ready to fight. So then Lord Balaram, actually he cooled their tempers, you know, 
he cooled all the, temple, the tempers of the Vishni heroes. And they had already actually put on their armor. And uh, so it's described here that he who purifies the age of quarrel do not want a quarrel between the Krus and the Vrishnis. Thus accompanied by Brahmanas and family elders, he went to Hastinapur on his chariot, which was as effulgent as the sun. And he went, he appeared like the moon, surrounded by the ruling planet. So the parties of the Yadavas, they set camp in the garden outside the city. And Lord Balaram sent Uddhava to ascertain King Dhritarashtra's frame of mind. And then when Uddhava appeared in the core of a cart and announced, in the core of a court, he announced that Lord Balaram has arrived. And the Korovas, they actually worshipped Uddhava and they went to see the Lord taking auspicious items with them. So then Prabhupada writes in the purport there, he says, they all exchanged words of reception by asking one another of their welfare. When such form formality was finished, Lord Balaram, in a great voice and very patiently, submitted before them the following words for their consideration. This is what Lord Balaram said. King Ugrasena is our master and the ruler of kings. With undivided attention, you should hear what he has ordered you to do, and then you should do it at once. So in King Ugrasena said, even though by irreligious means several of you defeated a single opponent who follows the religious codes, still I am tolerating this for the sake of unity among family members. So upon hearing these words of Lord Baladev, which were full of potency, courage, and strength, and were appropriate to his transcendental power, the Kauravas actually became furious, and they spoke as follows. So, <clears throat> actually, you know, the core of us, they actually honored Balaram with like rituals, items of respect. But when he conveyed Ugrasena's demand to release Samba, they became angry. And it's very amazing, you know, and they said that the Yadavas are trying to give orders to the core of us. This is like a shoe trying to climb atop one's head. It is from us alone that the Yadavas ha have obtained the royal thrones and yet now they are presuming themselves our equals. No longer will we extend to them royal privileges. <laughs> so this is, they became very puffed up in this way. And they're saying, only because we looked the other way could they enjoy the pair of yak tail fans and the conch shell, the white umbrella throne and the royal bed. <laughs> so Prabhupada said in the purport that the Kauravas are thinking that the Yadus, they should not have used such royal paraphernalia in our presence. But we did not check them due to our family relationships. So by using the word asmad upekshaya, the crew is meant to say that they were able to use these royal insignia because we did not take the matter seriously. And as explained by Vishnava Chakravati Thakur, the crews thought, showing concern about their use of these items would have been a single sign of respect. But in fact, we do not have such respect for them, since they are of inferior families. They are not to be respected, and so we pay them no regard. Wow, so this is pretty heavy. <clears throat> so the dust of Krishna's lotus feet, which is the source of holiness for all places of pilgrimage, are worshipped by all the great demigods. The principal deities of all planets are engaged in his service, and they consider themselves most fortunate to take dust of the lotus feet of Krishna on their crowns. Great demigods like Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva and even the goddess of fortune and I are simply parts of his spiritual identity. And we also carefully carry that dust on our heads. And still, Krishna is not fit to use the royal insignia or even sit on the royal throne. So this is Balaram speaking. So he's talking at the position of Krishna and how everybody worships him. So all these places are pilgrimage because of him. So having said this, the Kauravas, nobles, they went inside their city and Lord Balaram decided that only way to deal with those who are maddened by false prestige is through brute punishment. Thus he took his plow weapon and intended to rid the earth of all the crews. 
he began dragging Hastinapur toward the Ganges. So just see the power of Lord Balaram. So the Lord angrily, he dug up Hastinapur with the tip of his plow and he began to drag it, intending to cast the entire city into the Ganges. So Prabhupada writes in the purport that Balaram was so furious that it looked as if he could burn the whole cosmic creation to ashes. And then he stood up steadily, taking his plow in hand, he began to strike the earth with it. And in this way, the whole city of Hastinapur was separated from the earth. And then Lord Balaram, he began to drag the city toward the flowing water of the river Ganges. And because of this, there was a great tremor throughout Hastinapur, as if there had been an earthquake, and it seemed that the whole city would be dismantled. So this is amazing. <clears throat> so this is when uh, it said here, except for Samba, you should attack and kill everyone in the city with your water. That's what he told the Ganges. And thus he would fulfill his promise to rid the earth of the Korvas while making sure that nothing bad would happen to Samba. So, this, so they're seeing their city, it's in imminent danger. It's falling into the river and the Korvas are terrified. So they quickly brought Samba and Lakshman and before Lord Balaram and they began to glorify him. <laughs> Again, just like Jumuna Devi. Oh Lord, please forgive us who are so ignorant of your true identity. And so this is what they said, seeing that their city was tumbling like the, a raft at sea as it was being dragged away and that it was about to fall into the Ganges, the Korvas became terrified. To save their lives, they approached the Lord for shelter, taking their families with them, placing Samba and Lakshman in front. They joined their palms in supplication. <laughs> so this is what happened, they were frightened. So this, guess what they said? Rama, Rama, Kila, Dara, Prabhavam na vidam te muranam na ku budhi nam ksantam arasi atukamam. So similar prayer to Jumuna Devi. This is what the Korva said. O Rama, Rama, foundation of everything. We know nothing of your power. Please excuse our offense, for we are ignorant and misguided. <laughs> so just see. So they continue. You alone cause the creation, maintenance, and annihilation of the cosmos. And of you there is no prior cause. Indeed, O Lord, authorities say that the worlds are mere playthings for you as you perform your pastimes. O unlimited one of a thousand heads, as your pastime you carried this earthly globe upon one of your heads. At the time of annihilation, you withdraw the entire universe within your body and remain all alone, lie down to rest. Your anger is meant for instructing everyone it is not a manifestation of hatred or envy. O Supreme Lord, you sustain the pure mode of goodness and you become angry only to maintain and protect this world. So they bow tow to him. He's the soul of all beings, the welder of all potencies. He's a tireless maker of the universe and they're offering obeisances and taking shelter of him. So then Sukadev Goswami says, thus propitiated by the crews whose city was trembling and who were surrendering to him in great distress. Lord Balaram became very calm and kindly disposed toward them. He said, do not be afraid. And so he took away their fear. So what they did, Dur Duridon, he came, he was very affectionate to his daughter, so he gave a dowry of 1,260-year-old elephants, 120,000 horses, 6,000 golden chariots shining like the sun, and 1,000 maidservants with jewel lockets on their necks. <laughs> Just see. So, so the Supreme Lord, he accepted all these gifts and he departed with his uh, son and daughter-in-law and his well-wishers bid him farewell. So then Lord Haleula entered his city, which was Dorka, and met his relatives whose hearts were all bound to him in loving attachment. In the assembly hall, he reported to the Yaru leaders everything about his dealings with the Kurus. So even today, the city of Hastinapur, it's visibly elevated on the southern side along the Gajis, it thus showing the signs of Lord Balaram's prowess. So this is what, so anyway, it says in the purport that Prabhupada said that superficially the, the Korvas appeared to be insulted, but they wanted to challenge Lord Balaram's power. You know, just they wanted to see him exhibit his power, his inconceivable strength. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that they got what they asked for. Oh, so anyway, that's that pastime. So in the Adi Lida, there's a very nice verse. It says, those two are one and the same identity. They differ only in form. Lord Balaram is the first bodily expansion of Krishna, and he assists the Lord's transcendental pastimes. So Lord Balaram is the Svamsa expansion of the Lord, and therefore there's no difference between the potency of Krishna and Balaram. And the only difference is in their bodily structure, and that the first expansion of Godhead, Balaram is the chief deity among the first quadruple forms, and he's the foremost assistant of Sri Krishna in his transcendental activities. So what does that mean? So this is a nice description here to describe that. <clears throat> so the Lord's energies are, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, they're described. There's his internal energy, his external energy, and his marginal energy. So Balaram is actually the source of all incarnations. So in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it talks about the glories of Lord Nityananda Balaram, who's non different than Balaram. So the Supreme Godhead, Krishna is the fountainhead of all incarnations, and Lord Balaram is his second body. So Prabhupada writes that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, you see there, and he's the primeval Lord, the original Godhead. And his first expansion is Lord Balaram. So you can see here, the first expansion, Baladeva is here, you see. And then from him comes this first quadruple expansion right here. This is Vasudeva, Pradumna, Aniruddha, and Sankarshan. So in that area. So here from the spiritual world, you see everything comes. And then Krishna expands himself into Baladeva. And then from him comes all the Nitya Siddhas, the Parakakas, all the liberated associates manifested by Baladeva. So then from there, it, it goes on to describe. So, and then, so, yeah, so this is all happening in Goloka Vrindavan. And then when the purpose of creation from Krishna first expands as Balaram, and then from Balaram, Sankarshan, Aniruddha, Pardumna, Vasudeva, and then the Chaturvyuha. And then from that, the Narayan, uh, the Lord of Vaikuntha comes. And then that next expansion is described here. You can see is the second quadruple, as you can see here, is right here the second quadruple expansion. And you see all these Narayan expansions here. There's the Karnodaksai Vishnu, the Garudaksai Vishnu, the Ksirodaksai Vishnu all come from Balaram. You see like that. And here we see Lord Shiva, he offers, he worships Lord Sankrashan. He's always meditating on him, offering beautiful prayers to Lord Balaram. So that's nicely described there. So, for, so from Sankrashan, is incarnated, the Adi Shankar, who is the original Lord Shiva, as we've shown there, it, that he comes. So actually, systematically, we can understand that the Vaishnava Nama Yata Sambhu, that Shiva is the greatest, the supreme most of all Vaishnavas. Why? Because he's an expansion of the original spiritual master, Lord Balaram. And now that same Sankarshan also expands himself when it comes time for creation as Sarodaksaya Vishnu, you know, and, uh, you know, Ma Vishnu, like that, so it describes. So here you can see here, on the bottom there, there's the Karna Ocean, and so that's where uh, Ma Vishnu comes, he expands, all the planets emanate from his body, all the universes, and, they, and he enters into each universe as Garbodaksaya Vishnu. Then he enters into the heart of every living being as Chiro Dakshaya Vishnu. So all these various incarnations come into this world. The Machi Avatar, the Vraha Avatar, the Nishringa Avatar, the Vamana Avatar, the Rama Avatar. They're all incarnations of Chiro Dakshaya Vishnu. So in this way, we can understand that Balaram is the source of all incarnations. But still, he's in the mood of the servitor because he's the su Supreme Personality guided in the mood of servitor. So he's considered to be the original spiritual master. So let's close that there. So there's an interesting uh, uh, memories that was Harisari remembers one time when he was serving Srila Prabhupada in Hyderabad in 1976. 
and after Srila Prabhupada's lunch, he usually takes a nap, and then he wakes up and they give him a garland and fruit juice and some whole fruits. So at this time of the year, the pomegranates were available, and you know they offered to Srila Prabhupada, and Harisari was about to you know, finish cleaning up and leaving, and then Prabhupada called him back, and he pointed to the pomegranate, and he said, just like this, all the universes are packed up in the Kazo Ocean. So Hari Sari says, every time I see a pomegranate, I think of all the universes packed up. So this is how we can simply understand how these universes are. <laughs> you know, we can look at nature. It's amazing. So what is this? Another expansion of Balaram. This is, a, you know, Kesha Vadrita, Kurma Sarira Jaya Jagadish <laughs> This is Kurma Dev. He's the Lord of the universe. So, you know, he upholds. We talked about Ananta Sesha. And there's another prayer by Lord Shiva. He says that all the great sages accept the Lord as a source of creation, maintenance, and destruction. Although he actually has nothing to do with these activities, therefore he's called unlimited. All the Lord is an incarnation of Sesha, holds all the universes on his hoods. Each universe feels no heavier than a mustard seed to him. Therefore, what person desiring perfection will not worship the Lord? So in the Brahma Samhita says that the Supreme Godhead is just engaged in his, in his self-ecstatic you know, enjoyments in the transcendental realm and he has no association with this mundane potency. So just see here, I mean it's described, you know, I, I, this here is, is a universe on his head but it's described to be like a mustard seed, which would probably fit in this little crevice right here. You couldn't even see it. But just so we can kind of get a realization of how he's carrying the universes in all these hoods, and you can see some of these here and here. So this is uh, Lord Balaram, the power. And this doesn't do justice either because this Ananta Sesha has thousands of heads, and each of these heads, they, they like gleam, they like, they're so bright, each one, these like little pores are like diamonds and jewels and gems and they emanate like bright lights like the sun, you know. So it's amazing how that's, just to give you an idea. So again, we will see here how this is what is not only creating the universes but is upholding the universes. You know, that's just one universe, many millions of universes coming from, you know, Mahavishnu, and all the different incarnations, the Vaikuntha Lokas, you know, and we're all the way from the spiritual world. So this is, this is Lord Sesha, this is Lord Balaram. And then in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, there's a description. It says there that this, that same Lord Vishnu in the form of Lord Sesha holds the planets upon his head, although he doesn't know where they are for he cannot feel their existence upon his heads. His thousands of hood ex hoods extend, are adorned with dazzling jewels, su you know, surpassing the sun. The universe which measures 500 million yojanas in diameter rests on one of his hoods like a mustard seed. Can you imagine? So in the purport there, Srila Prabhupada explains that the Lord of Sveta Deep expands himself as Seshanaga, who sustains all the planets upon his innumerable hoods. These huge global spheres are compared to grains of mustard resting on the spiritual hoods of Seshanaga. The scientist's law of gravity is a partial explanation of Lord Sankarshan's energy. The name Sankarshan has an etymological relationship to the idea of gravity. So this is how the understanding of what is really gravity, it's, it's the energy of Lord Sesha. So this is all described there. So he has thousands of hoods and each one sustains a global sphere like a mustard seed. So this is nicely described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. So this is uh... So look, Krishna Balaram and Vrindavan. This is a nice painting by Mur Murli Dar Das. And uh, so this is, you know, Krishna and his elder brother Balaram. They sport in the forest of Vrindavan. 
that take care of calves and they play their flutes and play various games in the forest. That's described in chapter 11 of the Krishna book. And uh, there's no difference actually between them too. But once in Alabad at the Kumbh Mela, a dispute took place between two devotees on this same point. One devotee, Madhuvis Prabhu, he said, there's no difference between Krishna and Balaram. The only difference is that Krishna is blackish and Balaram is whitish. But, but Mother Jamuna, she disagreed. So she said that there's another difference because Krishna is the only enjoyer of Shumati Radharani. So the two were arguing and His Holiness Tamal Krishna Maharaj, who was Srila Prabhupada's zonal secretary for India, he brought the matter to Srila Prabhupada. So he began, he said to his Prabhupada, Madhuvis Prabhu says that the only difference between Krishna and Balaram is the, is the color, right? And then Srila Prabhupada said, yes, he's right. And then Tamal Krishna Maharaj continued, but Mother Jamuna is saying that there's another difference between Krishna as the only enjoyer of Radharani. And Prabhupada nodded and said, she's right. And then Tamal Krishna Goswami offered, Srila Prabhupada, they're saying different things. They both cannot be right. And Srila Prabhupada said, you are right. And then Tamal Krishna Goswami asked, then which is right? And Prabhupada answered, you decide. So there's another incident on the same lines, and Prabhupada asked, who's stronger, Krishna or Balaram? Although they are equal potencies as Swamsas, as Swamsas, so there's some difference. So Prabhupada asked, who's stronger? And then a devotee says something, and then, and then someone else says, well, he said that Krishna is stronger because Balaram receives his strength from Krishna. And that's true. And then another devotee said, uh, somebody said that, yeah, Krishna is stronger because Krishna is full in all opulences, and one of the opulences is strength. So he says that Balaram is stronger because he's Krishna's elder brother. So this is what Prabhupada said. Krishna is stronger, but the evidence he gives is different from that what anyone here has suggested. The, the evidence Srila Prabhupada offered does not come from the books. Srila Prabhupada explained, Krishna is stronger because the deity of Lord Balaram rests his arm on Krishna's shoulder. So you see, <laughs> so it's described in the painting there. So here's another pastime, the Rasli match. This was in Mathura in front of Kamsa and a large audience. So they were wrestling these monsters. Chanara, you know, was wrestling with Krishna and Mustika was wrestling with Balaram. And they thought that these huge wrestlers, you know, they're like solid, like stone. And look at these mere boys. This is unjust. So to relieve their anxiety, Krishna decided to kill them right away. So Krishna shocked Chanaraka with three strikes of his fist. And then, uh, so then Chanara struck back, but Krishna was not even slightly disturbed, and then he grabbed Chanara's hand and wheeled him around until he lost his life. And then Balaram, he killed Mustika with one forceful strike, and then Mustika began to vomit blood, and he fell to the ground. This is a nice painting by Pariksit Das. So, so the Krishna and Balaram killing many demons, and these demons represent the anartas that we have in our heart. And in uh, Bhakti, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur uh, talks about in his Prakrita Rasa Sata Dushini, there's a verse he says, if anartas are not removed, then the holy name will never produce knowledge of the divine qualities of Krishna. If anartas are not destroyed by the chanting of the holy name, one can never engage in the service of Krishna. So this uh, Bhakti no Thakur he said the main anartas of devotional service have descri been described in the relation to the appearance of the demons killed by Krishna and sometimes, you know, by different demigods also killed by Krishna and Balaram. So here's one. So Pralambasura, this is the demon. He represents lusty inclinations, desire for personal gain or honor, the desire for profit, adoration, and distinction. So this is a painting by our resident Gunamayi Dasi. She painted this painting. And so this, this Pralambasura, if you don't know the pastime, just to summarize, he came in the disguise of a coward boy and they were playing 
with one set of boys and you know they were doing this carrying game if one loses they have to carry the other person so this Prolambasura he chose to take Balaram and he disguised himself as a cowboy and he sided with Krishna's team so there was two teams you know Krishna and Balaram had each a team and then he decided to carry Balaram and he thought that he will kidnap Balaram and then he'll kill Balaram and then Krishna will die because of his separation from Balaram so anyway we know what happens so this is he came and Balaram you know so actually uh, this demon became very very large and Balaram was like wow what's going on he was, he was worried you know what's happening and Krishna said hey you're Balaram don't forget who you are <laughs> so then Balaram got back to his senses and then he hit him on the head and he was dead so this Prolambasur is also in personalism and this was killed by Balaram the original spiritual master so there's another demons here these are Danakasura the ass demons so they represent gross materialistic intelligence ignorance of spiritual knowledge of the soul or jackass like foolishness this is what they represent so we know that this is a painting by uh, Jadarani and uh, so this uh, Danakasura pastime is actually very nice and so you know just to summarize that Krishna's friends they were hungry and they said let's go get some ripe tall fruit look there's so many over there and they're like no we shouldn't go there there's these big demons they're gonna eat us up if we go there and so they Krishna and Balaram wanted to please their friends so they went and they you know they, you know this is what happened they, they swung them around and decorated the trees with their bodies so these are the burdens so anyway summary so this is a deliverance of the Davida gorilla so when this Davida gorilla heard that Krishna had killed Bomasura he planned to create mischief throughout the country to avenge his friend's death so this he was setting fires throughout the villages you know he was burning homes and he would even he was so powerful he was more powerful than 10,000 elephants and he would go into the sea and he would like you know smash the waves like this and you cause these waves and and flood the cities and at one time Balaram was dancing with and singing with his beautiful girlfriends he was disrespecting the girls by taking off the clothes of Balaram and the girls and he was showing his lower bodily parts and this way and he was causing a great disturbance and Balaram became very angry and he decided to kill him and immediately took his club and he up you know and then this gorilla uprooted a big oak tree and he tried to smash Balaram but Balaram just smashed it to pieces and he just killed him anyway there's more to the story but that's that and here's another time Lord Balaram he heard that the crews were preparing for war with the Pandavas and so he was neutral so he departed on the pretext of going to bathe in holy places but um, so because you know both Duridon and Yudhisthir they were very dear to Lord Balaram and to avoid this awkward situation he departed so after killing the demon Vidarath Lord Krishna put aside his weapons but Balaram still had to kill Ramaharshana and Balvala to finish relieving the earth of her burdens so after bathing at Pravash this uh, you know and honoring the demigods so this is what Balaram he went and accompanied the Brahmanas in this portion where the Saraswati River flows westward to the sea so this is where he came and so Lord Balaram came there and everybody offered him obeisances except this Ramaharshana so Balaram became very angry and he just got a blade of kusha grass and he just touched him with it and he killed him so when the Brahmanas are very disturbed and they said oh you killed a Brahman and he said okay what do you want me to do I could bring him back to life and they said no just his son represents him so you know his son will take the place but you have to go and perform pilgrimage and you have to kill this other demon you know this Balava so this is what he did so he came out and this is that demon Balavala so at so this Balavala when the Brahmanas would be performing their jagyas he would come and he would you know throw he would urinate on their where they were he would throw a stool 
you know, throw meat and so many things at them. And so Lord Balaam saw him and he very angry, he grabbed his plow and he dragged him down just to satisfy the brahmanas. So this is a painting by Bhadaraj, Mulidhar, and Jadarani. This is in the early days. So you can see where he gra grabbed him. So we see Balaram considers himself a servant. He knows that Krishna is his master. Thus he regards himself as a fragment of his plenary portion. So Balaram is a great example, you know, to follow. And Balaram actually, he serves Krishna in all the five rasas. You see, he's unique because uh, he serves him in that way. As Shantaras, Balaram expands himself through all his energies to create Goloka Vrindavan, the spiritual world, you know, and the land, the surroundings, everything is all done by Balaram. And he expands himself as the energy, his energies as Krishna's crown, his flute, his slippers, his clothes, all his ornaments, you know, all these things just to give pleasure to Krishna. And so this way he did that. And as far as Dasharas, whatever Balaram does is in the mood of a menial servant simply to please Krishna. And Sakyaras, he appears as Krishna's friend. They wrestle together, they play together, they argue, they fight, just to give pleasure to Krishna. And then as far as Vatshali Ras, he's his older brother. So sometimes he takes a position like, you know, Krishna, you're late, you know, go home, it's time to get up. You know, today's your birthday, you can't go out and play, you must stay home. <laughs> so in this way, he was like uh, acting in that relationship of Krishna's elder brother, like that in the Vatsalya. And then in Madhurya Ras, conjugal love, you know, Balaram, he can't directly take part in the Leela with Krishna because it's embarrassing if your older brother is there and you're dancing with your gopi, you know, friends. So, uh, you know, like he's like a parent, you know, Balaram, he's your older brother. So he doesn't want to create an uncomfortable situation for Krishna. So he expands himself as an Ananga Manjari. So how clever Balaram is. So because Radha and Krishna, their relationship is the summit, the peak, the ultimate love relationship is Madhurya Ras. So, and because there's so many secret rendezvous between Radha and Krishna, they take place. Radharani is very much afraid of Balaram. And out of great respect, Balaram is very much afraid of Radharani because he knows what a relationship is with Krishna. And so they're separate, li they're separate leelas in so many ways. But still, Balaram wants to assist in the loving affairs of Radha and Krishna. So he appears as Ananda Ananga Manjari, who happens to be Radharani's younger sister. And so he lives in the same house as her. And he's actually the most intimate, confidential sister associated with Radharani. And he's constantly playing with Radharani and making all kinds of wonderful arrangements for her to meet Krishna. So just see Balaram, such a servant, amazing. And so we saw Balaram massaging Krishna's feet. So here Krishna's massaging Balaram's feet. So this is how, so even though, you know, we see Krishna's massaging lotus feet Lord Balaram and then the next explains how Lord Balaram considers Lord Krishna his master. So we can also have similar sentiments with each other, you know, in our association because we too are brothers and sisters, spiritual brothers and sisters, and we should have the mood of service to each other. And as Srila Prabhupada said, we should address each other as Prabhu because Prabhu means master. And we're the servants and our Prabhus are our masters. So in that way, so Balaram uh, massages the lotus feet of Krishna, and sometimes Krishna massages the lotus feet of Balaram. And each was in a mood of giving pleasure to the other. And thus the relationship was so sweet and sublime. So we should also have this same mood of service as Krishna and Balaram. And then, you know, I want to serve my Prabhu, you know, let's serve my Prabhu. So it makes everything wonderful. And then people will be attracted. We talked about the, the gift of the rabbi, so in the same way, with this mood, we can attract people to come because it's such a beautiful, sweet mood of service to each other. So the gopis, they watch Krishna depart for the forest. So one day Krishna decided to take his breakfast as a picnic in the forest. So having risen early in the morning, he blew his bugle made of 
a horn and woke all the coward boys and calves with his beautiful sound. Then Krishna and the boys kept their respective groups of calves before them and proceeded from Brajabhumi to the forest. It's a beautiful painting by Driti and Ramdas, Abhi Ramdas. So one day in August 6, 2023, Balaram and Lady Subhadra decided to go for a drive. And after getting up early, they honked the convertible horns and they woke all the residents in New Dwarka and they proceeded to the beach for a picnic. So they decided to go for a ride on the chariots instead because the chariots are more attractive and people will be able to see them much more. So this is Lord Balaram riding his chariot. So in this way, it's, it's much more attractive to be on a chariot like that, to, you know, attract the attention of all the conditioned souls to get his darshan and mercy. Simply by seeing that, you know, many people are liberated. And what to speak, pulling the cart. You see, their life is changed. So Lord Balaram is given his blissful and merciful glance. Just see, even with the canopy down, he just gleams. So they arrive at the park, not only for a picnic, but for a festival. And wow, look at that darshan. And then they return home. Most people don't see these when they come back home because everybody's still at the beach. But he's returning home after a long day of festivities at the beach. So this is Lord Jagannath, his sister, Subhadra. And Lord Balaram, he was at the wrong angle here. We couldn't get a picture of him, but you could see his weapon, his club that he killed the demons with. And it's all due to the mercy of Srila Prabhupada. You see, he went, with, he went also for this great festival, just giving the mercy of Lord Balaram. So this is Krishna. Goloka Vrindavan, we see pictures of Krishna. He's always holding a flute, and Balaram's always holding a plow. This is very significant. So why does Krishna carry a flute? Simply to attract and charm the hearts of all living beings to his loving service. And then Balaram, why does he carry the plow? What do we do with the plow? We clear the road, we prepare the field so that the seeds will grow. So we either use the plow for that purpose in agriculture, or even to make roads to clear the obstacles so as the original spiritual master, Balaram is personified with his plow for the purpose of, first of all, the guru plows our hearts. His words are like a plow to make our hearts nice and soft so that the seed of devotion can grow and be attracted to the sweet sound of Krishna's flute. So that when the dirt of the ground is very dry, it has to be plowed, and that plowing is not a very pleasurable thing for the earth. So the ground is being ripped apart, just being ripped and ripped and ripped. So this is the purpose of the guru, to rip our hearts apart until it becomes very soft, to just plow it, plow it, and plow it until the hardness of the false ego, the pride, the illusion, the lust, and the anger and the greed. It, you know, he makes our house soft for the seed of love so they can grow. So that's what Balaram's plow is for. And through his representative, the spiritual master, he softens and prepares the field of our hearts for the seed of love to be attracted to the sweet flute of Krishna. So these are the obstacles that Lord Balaram, we saw his activities, killing all these different demons, representing all the anartas in this world and in our hearts. So he comes as a spiritual master and to make it soft so that we can enjoy this transcendental flute, attractive flute, and Krishna's saying, come on, come on, let's go. And he comes in the, the cart, attracting all the people to come, come, you know, come, come to the spiritual world. So this is the representative of Krishna, you know, is representative Balaram, is the spiritual master. So this is the wonderful uh, incarnation and pastimes of Lord Balaram and how he appears you know, it's amazing. He appears as Narayan, he appears as Sankrashan, Seshinaga. You know, he appears as Krishna's bed. You know, he massages his feet. He makes so many wonderful arrangements for Krishna. So in the same way, 
we're very grateful to be able to honor Lord Balaram in this special day and, and just take his beautiful darshan. We see wonderful flower outfit and so many festivities today will be in his honor. So thank you for your kind attention. Any comments or questions? Anybody have any more? Uh, uh, past times, Lord Balaram, I'd like to expand on anything we said. Because I guess there's no breakfast, right? Fasting today. So, anybody else like to say anything? In honor of Lord Balaram? Okay. Well, thanks again. Oh, you want to say something, Prabhu? Sure. Yes. Yeah, when Lord Balaram kills, just like Krishna, they get liberated. Yeah. So whatever they do, whether it's their mercy, forgiveness, or chastisements, they get, they get the mercy. Yeah. So Lord Balaram kicked somebody one time, or Lord Itananda kicked somebody right one time. That was his mercy. <laughs> I think I showed that. And he, put his he put his foot on somebody's head. Like that, yeah. Anybody else want something? Okay. Thanks again. All glories to Lord Balaram. Ki jai. Hare Krishna.